Welcome to Lemons.com in our lab video series on MPLS. You can find a playlist of MPLS videos on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. MPLS can be viewed as an enabling technology as it's not usually used by itself, but it's actually allowed you to run many useful services on top of it, and one of the most popular MPLS services is MPLS VPN, especially in the service provider space. So what MPLS VPN allows you to do is to provide logical separation between different networks using the same physical infrastructure. And MPLS VPN is based on what they call a peer model, where the customer edge device or CE router is actually exchanging routing information with the provider edge routers or the MPLS VPN provider network. As opposed to building an overlay network on top of a transport network like any other VPN technology such as IPsec or GRE, this video is going to be all about the fundamental of the MPLS VPN and we're going to be building an MPLS VPN network from scratch and this is including configuring the IGP routing protocol ISIS and enabling LDP for the label exchange as we've seen in the previous videos and then we're going to be configuring VRF for each of the customer's network and then we're going to introduce the concept of route distinguisher and route target and see how those components plays or has its roles in the MPLS VPNs and then we're also going to look at the multi-protocol BGPs, also under the main components in the MPLSV. For lab topology, we're still using the same physical topology as the previous labs in the video series with the routers R1 through R8 and Switch 1. And the link between the router R2, R3, R4, and R5 here in the middle are there all zero point-to-points where the other connections that we have, they're based on layer 2 VLAN as shown in their diagram. Okay, for our layer 3 topology, this has changed slightly since so this is something completely new for our MPLS VPN. In the middle, we still have the MPLS network that we're going to be configuring. The router R1, R2, and R4 are considered a provider edge or PE routers, while we have here R3 and R5 also in the middle that doesn't really connect to the customer network and purely within the MPLS cloud, and those are considered a provider router or P routers. So all these two router desks are going to be label switching while the R1, R2, and R4 is going to have a knowledge of the customer network and we're going to be building a full mesh IBGP between them to transport the customer routing table. Also, the devices connected to the PE routers are considered a customer edge device or CE routers. And our diagram here we have for the first VRF or customer, C1, we have router R6. On the left and on the right here we have router R7. We also have a second VRF, our second customer, C2, with R8 being a CE device and Switch 1 also being a CE device. And each of these customers also have its own route target and route distinguisher assigned to them, which we're going to be using as part of our configuration. As far as routing protocol, we're going to be running ISIS for our IGP within the MPLS cloud, but for customer uh, PE to CE connections, we're not going to be dealing with any dynamic routing protocol in this video. It's something we're going to be look at in the future video. So we're just going to keep things simple and just focuses on the building the core network. Let's begin our configuration at task number one, ISS and LDP. These should be nothing new to you. It's just enabling ISIS in our MPLS network as well as LDP. Here we need to configure ISS level 2 on router R1 through R5 and then advertise that loopback 0 into ISIS. We need to use the net ID in this format where X is the router number and then for each of the links that connects R2, R1, R2, R3, R4 and R5 we need to enable LDP and then using its loopback 0 for the router ID as well. Okay, So just bringing up the diagram one more time. So what we're going to be touching here is the routers in the middle both PE routers and the P routers. Okay, so R1, R2, R3, R4, and R5. Okay, so let's start our configuration on R1. We're going to be configuring both or enabling ISIS and LTP at the same time here. So start off with MPLS IP command to enable MPLS. And then configure the router ID with loopback 0. Let's do show interface IP or show IP interface brief and we are dealing with a fast 00, zero on router 1. Let's do router ISIS with the net ID of 490100 so the area is 0100 and then for the system ID we have 1 is the router number and then 00 and then we have to make sure we are just doing a flat level 2 ISIS, so IS type will be your layer 2 only. 
Okay, now we need to advertise loop back zero to ISIS, as well as the F, the fast Ethernet zero zero enable ISIS, as well as the LDP. Okay, so that is for router one. For router two, enable MPLS IP, MLS IP, router ID loop back zero, or MLS LDP rather, loop back zero. Router ISIS net 49 same area this time it's two zero zero is type there were two only and then interface loop back zero and here we are dealing with CR interface zero 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 one zero so CR interface enabling ISIS as well as LDP ISIS and then LDP. Okay, now on our router number three, we have three interfaces fast 00, 0000, serial 000, and then 010. Okay, so router R3, PLS IP, PLS LDP, router ID, feedback 0, router ISIS, net 490100. Three zero zero IS type level two only the face loop back zero enable ISIS serial interface ISIS and PLS IP serial interface zero one zero router ISIS and then MPLS IP and then the last interface is fast zero zero towards R one. Okay, now router R4, we have 0, 0, 001, 0, 0, 0, and 0, 0, 002 to enable MPLS. Okay, so MPLS IP, MPLS RDP router, loop back 0, and the net. Okay, IS type, level 2. router ISIS, and then serial, let's make sure I get this right. So look at the interface brief, we got this guy, MPLS IP, we have 0, 01, and then 0, 02. Okay, and then our last router, router 5, same thing, three serial interfaces. MPLS LDP router, loop back 0. O nine five zero zero. Type level 2 only. Back zero, and then we have serial, and let's double check. First serial interface, IP router, ISIS, MPLS IP. As you can see, the configuration is fairly straightforward. The last interface is zero two. There you go. So now all of those should be enabled. So let's do a quick check. Let's do R3. So R3 should have three LDP neighbors. So show MPLS LDP neighbor. So here we have a neighbor to R1, R4, and R5. Okay, so let's check R5. MPLS LDP neighbor. R5 has a neighbor of R2, R3, and R4. So that looks correct. And then let's do R2 real quick. LDP neighbor. So R2 and R5. Okay, so on R1, let's do show IP route, ISIS. So here we should be seeing all the loopbacks of R2, R3, R4, and R5. And they're all coming in as a 
level two routes. Okay, and that basically should complete our task number one. Okay, so moving down to task number two with the VRF configuration. Now we have to configure a VRF C1 on R1 and R2 with the route distinguisher and route target of 100 colon 100. And then we need to add R1 fast 0, 116 and R2 fast 0, 0 to the VRF. Okay, and then we need to configure VRF C2 on R1 and R4 with the RD and RT of 200 colon 200. And then add R1 fast 0, 1. Dot 18 so sub interface and R4 fast 00 to the VRF. Okay, so going back to our diagram here, as we discussed earlier, we have two VRF C1 in green and VRF C2 in red that we're going to be configuring. So the routers we have to touch are R1, R2, and R4. So these are considered customer networks that we're going to try to provide connectivity across our MPLS VPN. So let's start our configuration for this section on R1. This R1 is going to have to have both VRF C1 and C2. So here I want to create a VRF. We use command IP VRF C1. Since we are dealing with a traditional iOS, but you might have to use a different version or variation of VRF. It could be a VRF definition if you were to deal with a iOS XE, for example. But here all we need is the IP VRF C1. Then we can configure it a route distinguisher. So the purpose of the route distinguisher is to make sure that a route as it's being transported across the MPLS are unique because it is possible to have an overlapping network across the different customers. So by prepending the route as part of the VPN v4 routes you will see a little bit later, you can make a customer routes unique when you prepend that with a route distinguisher. So here for C1, we have a route distinguisher of 100, colon 100. Okay, the next parameter that we need to configure is route target. Okay, so copy paste. And we need to specify if you want to configure a route target as for the export or import or both. So route target is nothing but a tag that you apply to a route in a form of extended community. So what it does is it tag once the route is tagged and gets transported to the other side. So for example here, this subnet right here gets tagged with the route target F100 and then the route gets transported across the MPLS to R2. And then on the R2 you can also have a configuration of route target as far as which route target you would like to import into the routing table and then advertise to that site. So at the originating site, it will be a export. Okay, so tagging the route being exporting function and then installing it on the remote routers, that would be an import function. But for us, since whatever that's being exported or advertised on this side, we would like to import it. So both sides would have a complete knowledge of each other and that requires the import and export of the same route target. In a more advanced MPLS VPN topology, you can get fancy with what routes you want to have particular route target tacked on. And then for some of the site, you can selectively import certain route targets. And that way you have a complete control on the, as far as the connectivity between sites. So it doesn't mean that a site needs to be able to see a routing table that belongs to every other site. So based on the import export function of route target, you pretty much have a complete control of that. We're gonna look at some of those scenario in our future lab videos. Okay, but here we're just gonna provide complete connectivity. So when we configure our target, we can just do both import and export of the value 100 and 100. So again, what this means is any route that's leaving this particular router for this VRF will be tagged by a route target of this value. And then for the route that's being received, it will get imported into this particular VRF as long as those routes are being tagged by this the same value, right? Okay, next we do an IP VRF for uh, VRF C2. Same thing, we have a route distinguisher of 200, 200, and then route target both 200, 200. Okay, now we have to add the interface fast 0, 1, 16. So let's do a show run interface fast 0, 1, 16. Okay, and get under the interface. 
we need to add that as a member of a VRF C1. You can see as soon as you do that, it stripped off the IP addresses. It's just to show you can do a show run of that one more time. And you can see the IP address has gone, so we need to re-enter the IP address. It will be the same thing for FAST0118 for C2. Okay, so let me copy this. IP BRF forwarding C2 and then put the IP back on. Okay, before we move on, we can do a quick connectivity check. So we do a ping, but now once the interface is part of the VRF, when you ping, you have to specify the VRF as well. So C1, we should be able to ping router R6. So that would be a 16.16.6. .6. You see that's pingable and then also, we can ping router R8, that's part of C2 VRF. Okay, and that's pingable as well. So now we're going to move on to router 2, right here with VRF C1, Office Fast 00 interface. So router R2, IP VRF C1, RD 100 100, route, target, and we're just going to match it, both import and export, 100, 100. Now we can do show run interface fast 00. Interface fast 00, IP VRF forwarding, C1. And then copy paste the IP. And we can try and do check connectivity to R7. 7. And that's also pingable. Because the last PE router we need to configure is R4 with the RFC2 of its fast 00 interface. IP VRFC2, RD, route distinguisher 200, route target, both 200, 200. And then We have a forwarding of on the fast zero zero with C2. Copy and paste. Do a quick connectivity check to C2. I'll say 216.104.10, which is our switch one. And that is also pingable. Okay, so we have completely configured the PE routers with the corresponding VRF, as well as moving the PECE subnet or interface into the corresponding VRF as well. And that should complete our Task number two.